and this stuff just went flying everywhere. I felt this massive bang in my back. And how did you sleep last night? Horrible. This is the <laughs> worst anchorage. They just said they're all leaving this afternoon on the high tide because uh, they're worried about the border closing. It's a yamba break for. Oh, all shakes on the wave. Yeah. We had beautiful downwind conditions, our favourite. We set and forget the sails and slipped into passive life, taking our turns of two hour watches. Coming around the headland, putting the engines down now. We lift them up when we're sailing. We pull the sails in, I think, and, and steam in. So Coffs is just around there, just past that little headland. With the wind gusting 25 to 30 knots, we needed to turn into it to pull the sails down. It was a bit too hectic to film, unfortunately. Oh, that was pretty hairy. It's always a lot scary when you turn it into the wind to take the sail down. Oh, it's got the heart going for sure, that one. As we rounded the headland, we were hit with the squall, which is when our wind generator blew up. Fun games on the way in, Jess. Oh, that was. I think we just finished filming like two seconds before. Um, we just turned into the wind to pull the main down because uh, it was just like howling. It must have been like 25 knots when we came in the headland there. And um, it got real rough coming in. I guess that swell's just squishing into the harbour. The next thing there was just this massive bang. We were literally like two seconds from being in the harbour and this stuff just went flying everywhere. I felt this massive bang in my back. Turned around, I saw the wind jenny. Um, I couldn't really react. Once I saw that wind jenny, hate just, <laughs> I hate that wind jenny. I literally, I've asked Michael to turn it off about three times today and we turned it on because we weren't getting much sun. I was just about to ask him to turn it off while we come in and anchored and it just blew up. It was like it read my mind like, no! Just exploded and it smashed the solar panels, whacked me in the back, got a big red mark across my back. It is so lucky that it didn't hit. Michael was like a meter away. It's so lucky it didn't hit him because you should see what it did to the solar panels. If that hit him, 
it would have cut him open. Like, look at this thing. It's carbon. Oh, whoa. It's like a blade. It's all bent. Like, that's like rock. That, and that is so sharp. Like, if that hit Michael or me or hit my face or something, that could have been so much worse. Luckily, it's only hit the, the solar panels. And luckily, it didn't hit our tender. That would have just popped our tender in an instant. I thought that our rope had gone in it because the previous owner told us to be really careful with the um, the reefing lines because when you're pulling the sail up, they can flap off into it. We've been super cautious, so I've looked up at that. I didn't see anything fly into it. It just exploded. I suspect that maybe there was a cone piece on the front. So the blades were like this, there was a cone piece. And that wind, I reckon that wind just popped the cone piece off. Was it even on there still? Yeah, it was, yeah. And it just, because that's the first thing I saw was that flying off and then just the blades. That's it. That, we're not wasting any more money on that piece of crap. I'll buy an inverter charger before we fix that because that is so frigging dangerous as well as loud. Like, uh, yeah, that's so lucky. Do I have a red mark on my back? Get me? Not too bad, but it definitely got you. It's gone down, I mean. Oh. There's our beautiful solar panel. Smashed. This fucking thing. Just a rainy 6 a.m. at Coffs Harbour. Yeah, we're gonna get up. We can get going now to Yamba. It's about 60 nautical miles, so it'll take us about 10 hours. So we want to get in there for the incoming tide. Or the top the of the afternoon. tide, which is about 4.30. Nice. So, What's the conditions this morning? Uh, it's pretty calm, rainy, and dark. So I can see the light coming up in the sky over there. So yeah, it doesn't should... take long for that light to come up, so we can get a wiggle. Did you around? How did you sleep last night? Horrible. This is the <laughs> worst anchorage. If you don't want to pay for a marina berth, it costs. It's, yeah. And it's any bit of east swell in it. It's getting ragged or not yeah. recommended. No. As we were racing to meet a high tide on the bar, we were forced to turn on the engines. It was a pretty uneventful sail, apart from our autopilot deciding not to work again, which kept us busy hand steering for two hours at a time. Struggling. Does not like going to starboard when it's rough. So, yeah, I think it's just too much pressure for it. I can't believe our poor solar panels. Look at them. I don't know if you can see that, but there's glass all over the boat too. So, so you've always got to approach this bar from the north when you come in because this is a big sandbar here. It stands right up, so you've got to come in, keep it wide in here. It was so nice to be here after several weeks at Southwest Rocks. On the Clarence, there's no shortage of beautiful beaches, perfect running tracks, and excellent food. I reckon this guy might be stealing our spot. Exactly where we want to go. 
just want to drop anchor. And someone wants to take a sail down exactly where we're dropping anchor. <laughs> Life's so tough. You've been going since six in the morning. Just let oh, me drop classic. Anchor. You thirsty? Thirsty and tired, hungry. Oh, I'm so hungry. Eating a brownie all day. <laughs> You're not even the good type. All right, Michael, we haven't actually done a debrief after the sail yesterday. Ah, it's about nine and a half hours, 60 nautical miles. Was, we were battling a lot of head current, so we had to motor the like motor sail the whole way, which is unfortunate. How much current? What, two and a half, I think? Two and a half knots. Head current was the worst we got. We first started a little bit offshore in about 30, 40 metres of water, and then we saw the sailboats all hugging the coast, like dodging all the shoals and everything. So we called up one boat and asked them and they said there was no current in shore so what lie so yeah so we went in there and the current did drop from about two and a half to about 1.4 at one stage was the lowest but, but it was mainly two the whole way yeah it got up to like well. 1.92 knots so yeah so even though we were in about 17 knots of wind we were still going you know under our six knot average because of the the head current so we had to motor which is yeah we got in Anchored in our favourite spot over at Whiting Beach. And then you slept through a massive squall last oh, night and we were like nearly so on the tired. beach. So as we were leaving Southwest Rocks, our mate Pat that we met that's taken us under his fishing wing, he came and gave us a nip of pump and, and uh, showed us how to catch whiting. He came down with his lovely wife Wendy and they gave us a farewell bottle of wine and he's like, oh, I got you a couple of muddies too. Like huge sour-westy muddies. They're massive. That's a massive claw. Look at the claw that on that thing. That thing's huge. But anyway, cheers Pat and Wendy. Um, yeah, these will go down a treat today. So we'll... And I'm going to put that wine in the fridge. Yeah, we'll put the wine in the fridge and enjoy it with that. But yeah, I'll cook these up. But yeah, it's just amazing the, the people you meet, you know, like so many people showed us so much kindness at Sour Westy. Matt at the charters, like, come over, use our washing machine. And we never actually Use our car. Them. We never even took them up on it in the end. Uh, this is the wine that they got us. Put it in our very empty fridge. We need to go shopping. What do you got going on there, Jess? Just some EXO mud crab. Thank, thank you, Pat. Yes, very nice. Um, it's very hot in this boat. Just gonna sit down, have a wine, and eat some crab. And then we'll definitely require a swim. Mm, cheers, Pat and Wendy. Delicious. So what's... Uh... What's happening? So we just went in to do a provision at the shops because uh, we haven't really been shopping for six weeks, just the basics. Um, and yeah, we have really been out of touch with this coronavirus stuff. I've been hearing my friends talk about shortages and stuff. And yeah, we just went into the shops. There's no toilet paper, um, flour. There's like just no canned goods, which is like really what we live off on this boat a lot of the time. Um, yeah, so we can't really provision properly. It's really weird. It's like this zombie apocalypse and the town is just empty. There's no one around. A lot of the shops are closed, um, all the cafes and stuff. Um, we got fish and chips and we were sitting outside and like people were looking at us weird just for like being out and about, you know, it's just really strange. And yeah, I feel like we've just been in this little bubble up the river. Hey, it's yeah, so anyway, we were just chatting to some of the older, more experienced yachties and they just said they're all leaving this afternoon on the high tide because uh, they're worried about the border closing. But, I mean, I've never even heard of a border closing. Is that even a thing? I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I've never, never been through like something like this before. But yeah, they're all leaving. They're really worried uh, about getting locked down here which is a bit concerning because there's a massive low coming through in the next few days, which basically means we won't be able to get out of here for about a week um, because of this massive swell that that'll bring on the bar. Um, but yeah, there's no way we can get out of here this afternoon. I mean, we're just not ready. Boat's not ready, we don't have fuel um, and we won't be sailing up there this afternoon. And yeah, it's like 100 nautical miles to the border. So I'm a little bit nervous. But yeah, what do you think, Michael? We're probably just, I mean, surely the border won't close and we'll just go next, like after this low. Yeah, I, I, I doubt the borders are gonna shut. Yeah. I mean, I'm really keen to stay here and spend some time in Yamber and Iluka. I really want to show you around, but 
it's weird. There is literally nothing open now. So anyway. Within a couple of days, it was announced that the Queensland border would close. Here we were stuck just south and locked in the river with a two to three metre swell preventing us from crossing the bar. The low brought more severe summer storms and huge swell. To Michael. I'm gonna go check out the bar. Massive. Pumping. Absolutely massive. How is the swell today? I didn't think it was. I thought it was dropping. The period's gone up. Oh, okay. It's like a 13 second period, two point something, something. meter swell. Yeah. Breaking across the whole bar. Yeah, we haven't seen that the whole time. This is why we've been stuck here. <laughs> it's a Yamba break wall. Looking at the bar at the bottom of the run out. Wild. Absolutely wild. The whole wall shakes when the wave hits. Yeah. The advantage of being in a small, powerful boat is that you can usually pick your timing and run in between sets. Worst case scenario, you can outrun or stay on the back of a breaking wave. Oh, faster. This is where the bigger boats don't fare well. Slow and cumbersome, we usually lack the power to get out of the trough of a wave. This is where we run the risk of taking a breaking wave over the stern, surfing into the one in front, or worse yet, putting you broadside to the next wave, leaving you vulnerable to capsize. Oh gosh. I think that's full theme for him. Oh my gosh, it's just disappeared. Far out. Join us next episode as we race the clock into Queensland before the borders are locked down, potentially ending our cruising season before it even begins. Escape the virus. We've been keen to dive this place for ages. What we bought her for, right here. Amazing how messy the boat has just gone in a short hour that we decided to go for a dive. Camera gear, dive gear, the upturned stools. <laughs> if you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, 
turn on the notifications and give us a thumbs up. It all helps. Thanks to our patrons for your ongoing support and welcome aboard, Rasmus.